You're listening to the Hunt Suburbia Podcast. I'm your host, Pat Guyette. Big bucks I've been dreaming often. Every night till I'm in a coffin. Vermont Woods to the burbs of Boston. I'm looking for a tree to get lost in. Chris Warner's little dust in the snow. Quality time, just me and my bow. Fall evenings, I know just where to go for some quality times for me and my bow. It's just me and my bow. All right, well, the ticks are already out in full force. I've already had to pull a couple off of me, flick them off the clothes. I must say, uh, I haven't gone out and sprayed all my clothes with permethrin yet, but it's a must. I'm going to do it uh, this weekend. Uh, Put a nice coating of my permethrin on all the clothes. Make sure that you uh, defend yourself against ticks. And this episode is with Tick Man Dan, and it's all about ticks. He, uh, He knows so much about ticks. We go into the diseases they carry, preventative measures, Um, things to look for and really it's a lot more than just uh, Lyme disease I mean they carry tons of diseases you got to make sure you get those ticks off of you like instantly when they get on you Um, is the sooner the better we go into all that detail Um, Dan Wolf aka tick man Dan great deal with a lot of knowledge on ticks so we just really just do a deep dive for 45 minutes straight into ticks Um, before we get into the podcast though just want to remind everybody um if you if you really like the podcast, support us, support the sponsors. Um, Heron Hill Winery, the official winery of Hunt Suburbia Podcast. Woodman Arms, the official muzzleloader of Hunt Suburbia Podcast. Um, Heron Hill, get on, and if it's your first time ordering, just use code HS5. You'll get an additional 5% off of all the orders, plus free shipping. Um, and if you have already ordered with that code before, um, the code won't work again. Just get on there and, and reorder up, and uh, we'll get credit for it. Uh, and Woodman Arms, get on, check out the muzzle loader. Call Timmy Bullduck if you guys have any questions. Um, the phone number, I believe, is on the website there. So please keep supporting the sponsors. That helps support the podcast. And then finally, um, I'm looking for some cameramen. I'm looking for some content creators. I, I really want to get some more videos out on the YouTube this year. I want to step up the video quality. Last year, I did a lot of stuff self recording on my iPhone. I plan to do a lot of that this year too, but. Um, you know, shoot me a DM or send me an email at huntsuburbia at gmail.com if you're interested in um, doing some filming. I mean, uh, I just had a guy cancel for um, uh, a turkey hunt. So I've got a turkey hunt coming up at the end of April um, slash maybe beginning of May. If somebody um, in Massachusetts wants to come and help and film that um, and edit it, that would be great. Uh, and I've also got a bunch of stuff going on over the summer. I uh, just got invited out to do some bow fishing in Connecticut. Um, we're going to be going to Vermont, do some fishing up there. So um, hit me up if you're interested in doing any kind of filming content. You don't have to be a professional. I mean, I'm not a professional in anything that I do. So um, even if you've just got a camera, or you're just getting into it, you know, hit me up. I'd love to uh, collaborate. And um, if you want to help push out some more content, that would be greatly appreciated. All right. Now let's get into the podcast. Tick Man Dan, this one's all about ticks. All right, back with another episode of Hunt Suburbia, and I am joined by Tick Man Dan, Dan Wolf, and uh, thanks for coming, Dan. And uh, we're going to talk about ticks. We're going to do a little deep dive into ticks, everything that Dan knows about ticks. Um, funny story, I actually bought his product, uh, which is a Tickies tick remover. Um, it, it's like a tweezer, right? But it's built for ticks. You're going to be a better pitch man than, than me on Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Um, and I bought that. Uh, I've had, I don't know, I've had four or five ticks on me this year. There was a lot in the spring before mm-hmm. we had a big drought. Um, uh, I was going out just doing some scouting and stuff, and I came back with ticks on me plenty of times. Um, was just using regular tweezers. I've never been super, you know, paranoid about ticks. I get one on me. It's not, you know, oh, go into emergency mode. It's like, ah, oh, it's a tick. I've had tons of them on me. And I usually get them off right. before 24 hours. So you tell me about um, Lyme disease. Do they have to be on, first of all, for 24 hours? Is that like a myth? Can you can you get Lyme disease um, in less than 24 hours with a, from a tick? 
Well, there's a lot of research. And first of all, th thanks for having me, Pat. I, I appreciate it. And uh, I hope that we can provide some helpful uh, information in this, in this piece uh, yep. regarding ticks that might get people to do something a little bit differently uh, that could help prevent uh, illness. Now, you're talking about Lyme disease. Um, uh, there have been studies that show it does take a while for that tick to transmit the bacteria that could cause uh, Lyme. Um, and some people say it's 24 hours. Some people say it's 36 to 48. Um, I, I, I can't give you an opinion on the time frame, although I can agree that it, it, it takes a little while for that little bug to wake up inside the tick and make its way into the, the host. Um, the problem is that I don't talk about ticks as being a, only a carrier of Lyme disease. We talk about tick-borne illness in general, which can encompass... Uh, in excess of a dozen different types of illnesses, including bacteria, parasites, and viral infections. So Lyme is just the one that gets all the publicity. Lyme is, is uh, one of the most popular ones because it's, 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 it's I don't want to use, well, trending is a word you could use, but it, it has caused a lot of, of suffering, and, and we want to make sure that we do whatever we can to sort of mitigate that. But uh, at the same time, um, you know, viruses and parasites, they can always also be uh, devastating and deadly, um, depending on what it is. And the, the, the thing is that they all have different rate, uh, transmission times. So Powassan virus, for example, it's very rare, but it has killed some people in the Northeast over the years. Um, that, that can be transmitted in 15 minutes. So if you get a tick on you, a deer tick in particular, which is the, the biggest culprit when it comes to uh, types of diseases that can be uh, uh, transmitted, um, you know, you don't want to say to yourself, oh, well, it's only been in for 12 hours, so I'm safe. Well, you have anaplasmosis, you have Babesia, you have Powassan, you have Tularemia, you have Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, you have, uh, you know, These all sound relapsing like fever, you have... Uh, you know all this stuff, and it varies With around the world. With the exception of Rocky Mountain fever, they all sound like they came from you know overseas somewhere. <laughs> well, I, I can't give you the well. There's bur <laughs> there's a bourbon virus out of Kentucky. Yeah, it was in Kentucky, I think. Uh, I might have. Might that. say it's bourbon. I might have that virus. <laughs> <laughs> well, or or later on tonight. Um, so so yeah. So you should never let your guard down because you don't think that you're going to get Lyme disease. Because the ticks in the Northeast uh, right now, the deer ticks, yeah. are carrying a lot of different types of pathogens mm -hmm. that can make you sick. Yeah. And I'm not saying, you know, I'm not uh, saying I'm not afraid of ticks, you know, or Lyme. I am. It's just I've had so many on me and uh, I'm used to it um, that I, you know, I, it's nothing for me or my wife to pick, you know, pick one off my back. Right. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know. I started last year. My dad gave me um, Sawyer Permethrin, and they're actually a sponsor mm -hmm. of the podcast. Um, but they're they're great, and okay. I, I I I cover my deer hunting clothes and any of my hiking clothes and mm -hmm. stuff in it now. And um, since you know when I do that, there's sometimes like I just go for a walk out back in my shorts, and I don't you know and I don't have permethrin on that, and that's when I end up getting ticks. Um, but so far. If you've got permethrin on your clothes, that's a really good safeguard against them. Absolutely. It is hands down, for as far as I'm concerned, the best preventative uh, for ticks available. Um, I know a lot of people will say, oh, well, you got to use DEET and this and that. Well, I'm not a big fan of DEET for ticks. Um, it's not going to hurt you, but, you know, unless you're covering your entire body with it, uh, ticks can tend to crawl over a deep covered area of skin because they're slow moving. They don't breathe that often. Yeah. I mean, that's why they can survive underwater for days. Hmm. Um, some people think they can survive flushing. So if you want to flush a tick, kill it first. Huh. Uh, I didn't and, know that. And we prefer to burn them because you can see them. They, you can almost hear them screaming and it gives <laughs> yeah. you a little, little satisfaction. But yeah, yeah um, you know, they breathe through their bellies through these things called spiracles that, you know, sometimes a couple times an hour. So crazy, you know, um, they, they, yeah. And what are they, are they in Iraq? They're in Iraq. They right? are in Iraq and arthropods and they, they are born with six legs, but they sprout an extra pair as, as they go from larva to nymph. Just to be a little more evil. 
Yeah, and blood is the only thing that they feed on, but they can feed on mammals and amphibians and uh, anything that has blood. So, you know, they're, they're a fascinating little creature. Um, but back to your situation, what I've found is that, you know, some people who get bitten over and over and over, like myself, I've been bitten in excess of 200 times by deer ticks. I've also had the opportunity and the great pleasure to remove more than 3,000 live ticks from things. <laughs> yeah. And that number is always climbing. But You're a couple hours late. I had my, my deer here in the uh, garage. Oh, and I, was, I wish. Oh, yeah. I, but I had to bring him to the butcher. and I, Yeah. Because what we're doing now is uh, I work with both the University of Massachusetts. They have a really great tick, um, tick testing program. Mm -hmm. And the University of Rhode Island has a great... Uh, program for it's free it's a free service for um, identification risk assessment and potential steps to take depending on uh, what level of, of risk you have been determined to be at so um, I do I have been asked to collect ticks for these groups I actually went out with Dr. Tom Mather who runs that vector borne Divi disease division at, at University of Rhode Island and we went tick hunting. So he showed me uh, some of the tricks to ticks. And we were in Weston at one of the conservation pieces. And we picked up 188 deer ticks. Uh, this was about three weeks ago. Um, off of the walking trail in about an hour and a half. Hmm. So there's no shortage of these ticks. And right now the ticks are at their adult stage in our area. And that means that they've lived long enough to be the high, you know, to have the highest percentage of potential um, microbes in their bodies because the longer a tick lives the more it feeds the more it feeds it more opportunity it has to to draw pathogens from that particular host that they're feeding on so the baby ticks are less likely to have infection but they're more likely to transmit it because you you don't find them yeah and they're nymphs right uh, nymphs well lar both larval and nymphs can feed on hosts mm -hmm. however most likely in most circumstances, the larval uh, ticks do not carry anything because they're usually born clean from the egg. However, there is a bacteria called Miyamotoii, Borrelia Miyamotoii, which is a, a kind of a different strain of the Borrelia burgdorferi, which is the, the basic Lyme one, Yeah, that is now being uh, discovered to have transmitted from the mother to the egg. Jeez. So that's a big problem because it's, I've known people with that disease and it's not pleasant. It's similar to Lyme, but it does have some differences. Um, but you'll, you really will never really see a larval tick embedded in you. I was going to say, so how do you, I mean, now I'm thinking all these little red bumps that, uh, I've you don't had, know. had throughout deer season that have itched, you know, maybe those are a little larval, larval tick. Yeah. I, you don't know. Hmm. That's, that, yeah, that's scary. That, that's the scary part. That is definitely the scary part. Yeah, and you can never get the, them out, really. If, cause well, it, you can. Uh, yeah. I, I've removed larval ticks with, with tickies. It's not, uh, I mean, you can't get a sharp enough tip on anything to really uh, do it you know, optimally. But um, the good news is in our area, it's still a very rare thing. We have to keep monitoring it to see if, if that's going to start to increase. Yeah. But there's other illnesses that are showing up. There's other types of ticks now showing up. And the combination of everything occurring uh, with um, uh, the climate fluctuations or changes, um, we're seeing perfect conditions for an abundance of different types of ticks an abundance of wildlife as what they call competent hosts, meaning they can transmit pathogens that will cause illness. And, uh, food, you know, so there's, there's plenty of food for the ticks. There's plenty of ticks. There's plenty of things that will keep them going. So I don't see any, um, any reason to believe that the tick activity or the numbers are going to be decreasing any, anytime soon. But for now, silver lining is the way you're going to get most of the diseases that, that ticks are carrying is, is going to be from an adult tick that is going to be recognizable. No, no actually no. more cases are reported as a result of nymphal tick season than adults, even though, for example, a nymph might be about one in five carry the Lyme bacteria mm -hmm. when an adult would be about uh, 50% to 60%. Really? Yeah. Gee, I didn't know that either. More people get it from the nymphs because 
they're so much smaller and you don't find them. All right. So you were just talking larval. The the larval ones don't really, they're, they're born more clean. So they're right. Okay. Right. So they're typically, if, if they're dirty, so to speak, uh, from an egg, they're probably going to be carrying this Miyamoto eye rather than a whole bunch of different viruses, parasites, and bacteria. The nymphs can start to, um, to get different types of microbes depending on what they feed on. And particularly uh, the, the, the white-footed mouse is really the, the worst one. Uh, but they feed on mice and squirrels and chipmunks and birds and all that stuff. And um, it's, it's not a pretty picture. So we have to do what we can to prevent uh, the bite. Um, and that's what kind of I, I was focusing on with, with tickies is uh, really focusing on the removal aspect of the process because it's everything. Like you said, permethrin, um, you know, doing what you can to do. I mean, daily tick checks, it's, it's huge. There's a, a large percentage of people like myself who have a reaction to tick saliva. Whether or not it's infected uh, or, or not, um, with, a, with uh, these pathogens, the saliva itself causes me to feel the bite and, and get an itchy red well hmm, that's right away while they're feeding. Now, I've uh, I've had a, that kind of um, sensation where previous tick bites, they come back all the time yeah, for me. And I don't me maybe, <laughs> And is that because of a saliva, you think? Because uh, I've searched myself when they come back, I go, there must be a tick on me somewhere. Yeah. And I'd look and I can't find anything. That's an interesting phenomenon. I don't know the details about that, but I think the saliva, um, you know, obviously... It's, Weeks later, after a bite, it's gone. Um, but I mean, I, I I've had that reaction as well. Yeah. Um, it must be something with the with our immune systems. Yeah. But I've ha- I've discovered larval ticks on me because even that little bit of saliva has caused a red itchy spot. And then if I look at it with the magnifier, I do see the larval tick in there. I mean, you can see them. It's not like they're the size of an atom. I yeah. mean, you can yeah. remove okay. them. I've done that. I've also had nymphal ticks in my belly button and every other place you can possibly imagine. So <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's a tricky thing. Yeah. Well, I, um, like, it's funny cause my, my wife, uh, my wife and I recently discovered that we were, um, uh, allergic to yellow jackets. I didn't know my whole life that, um, I was allergic to yellow jackets. Mm-hmm. I think it's one of those things that builds up. The more you get bitten by a yellow jacket, the, or stung, uh, the, the more allergic you become. And she didn't know we were out, uh, hiking and she got stung five or six times and I got stung three or four times. And, um, she ended up having a really bad reaction. We're, we're, we're driving, um, driving on route two and lemon, Lemonster Fitchburg area. And, um, you know, she's like, oh, my whole body's starting to itch now. And like, and, and she was just uncontrollably itching and saw hives breaking out. Um, and I looked over in her face, she had, face and neck had hives, and uh, she wanted to just go back home. I was like, no, we're. Yeah. I, I remembered passing a hospital a mile or two back, whipped it around, went to the hospital, and she ended up going into anaphylactic shock while oh, checking into Jesus. the emergency room. Right yeah. there. Perfect timing because they came out, got her with an EpiPen. Well, I hope you use that as ammunition in, in future in your future life with her. Like, hey, remember that time I saved your life? <laughs> well, we, we've, we've brought that up, but more, but more so like I just think about it and I'm, I'm, I'm so deathly afraid of, I, I pick out every yellow jacket I see now and I didn't realize how many there are. You don't realize until you get paranoid about them. Yeah. And I think that's the way we should all be with ticks is, um, but now you, I see them everywhere. Make sure you're having an EpiPen everywhere you mm-hmm. go. Yeah. Um, because I mean, next time her throat could close up, Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's terrible. And, and, you know, it's a little different with bees because they're actually injecting venom in you yeah. as opposed to, uh, uh, an infectious agent. So the longer term effects from ticks are, are certainly much different than the rapid yeah. onset of, of, Anaphylaxis. Where, where I was going with that one is, um, it's an interesting thing that our immune systems do because, um, uh, she sometimes will see a yellow jacket now mm-hmm. and, and get nervous and it brings back the reaction and her sting, sting areas like her sting, sting bites, whatever. Um, they'll start flaring up wow. and itching again from years ago. 
Yeah, and even that happens with me too. I my I still remember where I got stung by those yellow jackets, and you know, it just sometimes thinking about it mm-hmm. and bringing back the memory and the emotion of it can flare it up, wow. and it's weird. That is weird, yeah. Especially and with your uh, being a hunter in the falls when these yellow jackets are really aggressive. Oh my god! And I can't. I mean, I've had. Luckily, the- <laughs> I'm not as allergic as my right. wife is. Um, we went. But we're always the stepping whole... on those damn holes oh in the my ground. God. Yep. We were actually, I felt guilty too because we were coming, we did a long hike. Mm-hmm. We did watch you sit and did a big hike. And um, on the way back, I was like, there's a spot I've always looked at a map. I just want to, let's, let's walk up this path. And I just want to do a quick scout. And she doesn't like going off trail. And <laughs> she came off trail with me and then we got stuck. Oh. I was like, Jesus, I'm like this is the yeah, worst. You're, you're, you're done. Oh my God. <laughs> and, uh, but hey, I, I saved your life. So it ended yeah, up being, true. You know, so you made up it, for it. Turned it right back. But it evens itself. It, it canceled it, it itself out. So, yeah, guy, you can't. You don't have that advantage. But you, everybody's got to be paranoid about. And and I'll, honestly, like from from that experience, I, I I would recommend everybody go and do a um, what do they call those things? It's a uh, uh, they'll they'll prick you and they'll test you for all kinds yeah. of stuff and find out what Aller- you're actually allergy testing. Yeah, go do an allergy test, get a full panel done because you might you might be like my wife and not know that you are deathly allergic to. Um, a yellow jacket and uh if i kept driving on that highway she could have died on the highway yeah. because it was literally she was going into shock and it was yeah. rush hour no, time it's, and it's definitely a serious thing and oh, I'm, I'm glad you were able to take care of that but um yeah there's when you, you're talking about anaph- anaphylactic shock um there's a lone star tick now that's in our area i don't know if you're aware of this sounds like it's from texas well it's from down south for sure um but it's it's got its foothold here in the northeast and it's spreading very rapidly um this episode is brought to you by heron hill winery the official winery of the hunt suburbia podcast go to www.heronhill.com and use code hs5 for an additional five percent off at checkout now, they already have some great volume discounts on there. If you buy three bottles, you're going to get 5% off. If you buy six bottles, you get 10% off. If you buy 12, you're going to get 15% off. So if you add the 5% extra you get from using code HS5, you get 20% off plus free shipping for a case. HS5 is for first-time buyers. If you're a repeat buyer, you've supported in the past, just get on there and use uh, those uh, volume discounts. Get the wine delivered right to your door. Enjoy a nice glass of wine while you listen to this podcast. There's a lot of great information. And support us. Support the sponsors. We really appreciate it. HeronHill.com. Use code HS5 for an additional 5% or just enjoy their volume discounts. These ticks are aggressive. And uh, one bite from a tick could actually cause an allergy to red meat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That. I have heard about that. So, that But it Joe doesn't Rogan. come on right away, and I've heard people that, you know, they had a Lone Star tick bite, and they've been eating a, a steak or a piece oh, of venison, God. and they go into this, they get the, the same reaction. And it's terrible. Um, there's well, a woman that I know pretty well. She's so bad with this allergy. If she goes into, like, a, like an Outback Steakhouse, and they're cooking it, just the smoke from the grill... yeah. She'll start to burn up right away oh. and, and get get a rash on her skin just being exposed to that that in the air. So they're crazy, and you know, I'll, I'll make everybody paranoid. Here's a question that I don't know the answer to: What if ticks will be able to carry uh, COVID? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I guess it's moot if we get the vaccine and that mm-hmm. works. But um, uh, you know, that's another thing to to get scared about. But yeah, yeah they're, they're a huge problem. It's a global problem. Um, I was getting bitten so much. And, you know, at the time, I was a single dad with two young ch- young boys at home and two dogs. And there were ticks everywhere. I mean, I'm there in my truck. They're in my laundry room. I, I pulled back my sheets and see ticks in my bed. Um, and the kids were starting to get, on, get them on them. And so I did my research to find out what the best way to remove ticks uh, was. And I... You know, we really didn't have any good consistent information at that time. And there were some gadgets out there, you know, for a spoon and a, and a bottle opener looking thing and this and that. And then all the experts were saying use fine tip tweezers, but none of these used the fine tip tweezer. And they were all using this, what I call a scoop method. 
Yeah. And that's fine for bigger ticks. Mm -hmm. And I think I believe that those products were developed for, for pets, which is great because it's easy to remove a big fat engorged dog tick from the back of your dog. Not so easy in the crease on behind their leg or in, in their ear. Um, but that's where you would use these fine tip tweezers. And people will say, oh, what's the difference between household tweezers and fine tip tweezers? Well, there is a big difference. The, the thing you don't want to do when a, uh, to a tick while it's biting you is to tear it, uh, squeeze it, or agitate it in any way. Because if you think about what is a tick doing, it's like a mosquito. It's got a, a, a hollow tube that's stuck in your skin. And think of it as a, a water balloon with a straw sticking in your skin. And it's spitting and sucking and spitting and sucking. And that's where these pathogens can be transmitted. And that's where your blood goes back into the tick, which it uses as nutrients to either transform into the next stage of life or have eggs. And, and they can lay about two to 3,000 eggs each. Oh, this is gross. All right. Gross so just, just take this scenario. There's a deer in your backyard tonight in the fall when adult ticks are active. Let's say there's 50 ticks on that deer, yeah. which is completely understandable this time of year. I've, I take ticks off deer all the time, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 or more. Five of those fall off after feeding and lay 3,000 eggs each. Tomorrow night, that deer is now a mile away <laughs> and five more ticks fall off. And, you know, see how you see how this can spread. Now, there's other deer, you know, the deer may be. But now wait, they're not all just, I mean, I guess they, they die if they don't have a host, right? Eventually, yeah. But yeah. ticks can live two years. But there's, you know, there's probably thousands. There's like, even the ones that aren't on the deer, there's 20, 30, you know, ticks on the deer. Yeah, they're what not about, all What about on my it. two acres of land back there? I mean, there's, yeah. there, those are all laying eggs with 2,000, 3,000 babies right. too, right? But, but uh, certainly not all those babies are going to make it. Mm. Um, but the point is that, you know, there's different territories for different types of deer. Obviously, the does will be uh, living in a smaller area their entire life. Uh, the bucks may a much larger area when they're out patrolling or, or in the rut. Yeah. Um, so you have over, overlapping territories for deer. So this is just the mechanism for spreading. And deer is, they are what's considered a incompetent host, meaning the, the pathogens that cause illness in people and other mammals uh, or other animals don't survive inside of a deer system. We don't know why. It's just the way it is. Um, but they are the hosts that can travel and can spread. So they're responsible for... Uh, I think the biggest uh, spread of of the ticks. But the ticks' goal, if you can call it that, right? Their whole their their survivability and their reason isn't to kill their host, right? They didn't, they mm -hmm. need their host to survive. Yeah, but these illnesses don't kill you right away anyway. It takes yeah. some people I know have been suffering with Lyme. But for it would years seem that a deer years. would be a competent host for the tick because then they could survive forever on the deer. But, right, but it's incompetent as far as yeah. providing a a microbe that can. Um, beach, then uh, vector is the term, Got uh, it. vectorized to another uh, host. Got so, it. so yeah, so it, it, it's a very complicated process of what they do, especially when they bite. But back to the removal part of it, um, you know, you don't want to do those things I talked about because inside this water balloon with a straw sticking out of it that's now in you or sucking in your pet, and spitting sucking and, and sucking and spitting. And spitting. <laughs> um, <laughs> Is juice. I call it yucky tick juice. Yeah. Now, any exposure to that yucky tick juice can be problematic. Yeah. I'm not saying, I mean, people get bitten by infected ticks and don't get sick. You know, it's not a given. Um, it just conditions have to be right. And if you rupture that tick or if you squeeze it in the wrong place, you know, think about it. Are you forcing that yucky tick juice right into your system? Yeah. Thus increasing your exposure? Mm -hmm. Possibly. If you tear why, that, why do you come up with like a tick vacuum or something to vacuum it out so that the tick juice doesn't go back in? Well, <laughs> if you use the Tickies product, which is basically a specialized tweezer, mm -hmm. it's a stainless steel two-sided um, tick removal device, not a gadget. And it will. It has a forty-five degree angle on the sharp, pointy tips. Um, on a flat household tweezer, 
you're going to be much more likely to tear that tick yeah. or squeeze it in the wrong place. Yeah. So can you do it with household tweezers? Sure. Yeah. That's all I used before I, you know. Yeah. Well, now you know. I had one of these. Um, but when you're trying to remove a nymphal stage deer tick from your belly button, I can guarantee you, you are at much higher risk of causing problems with a household tweezer than with a sharp pointy tweezer Absolutely. like on tickies. So the, the nice thing about the product also is that I did, va- I did see the value in the scoop method. So I did create the backside of the, of the tool to be able to slide under into a V-shaped yeah. slot, yeah. a larger engorged tick like you would find on your dog, mm-hmm. and then lift straight up. So there's two. it's a dual purpose uh, device. Yeah, it's likely you're not going to have a large engorged tick on your body because it would have had to been there for a few days, yes. like, like multiple days. But right? if you go to the, U- the Tickies YouTube channel, if you search uh, Tickies, T-I-C-K-E-A-S-E yeah. on YouTube, you'll see a ton of video demonstrations of tick removal. Oh, yeah, exactly what I want to do. <laughs> Well, you should because it's important to see. I know it's just the, the, ugh, the demonstration. Me out. Yeah, and that's yeah. you know I find that a lot with people there. Oh, that's so gross! I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. Well, you should see it because yeah, no, you, you, you're you're likely again. You want to get paranoid about it. Yeah, you're likely going to experience a situation in your life if you live up here <laughs> where you're going to have to deal with a tick at some point. Yeah. So my point to you regarding true most humans will notice a giant tick on them as it's feeding, which they can feed on you for days, um, and get it off before it gets that big. But most little kids don't. Yeah. So there's a great be video. a good parent. <laughs> yeah. There's a great video of a four-year-old girl that I remove a tick from the back of her head. This thing is giant. I mean, it is just enormous. And go viral? Um, that one, <laughs> no. But I did have a removal of a tick on my golden retriever yeah that actually um exceeded uh, 11 and a half million views wow and resulted in about forty five thousand subscribers on the channel wow probably some business too good for you yeah, yeah. definitely some business so so yeah. you'll see some good stuff there on that on that youtube channel but um you know it is a product that i designed completely out of necessity yeah and and you'll you'll see that it's it's just a lot better to have and we're going to be developing some additional products as well but you know throw it in your pack um leave it in your in your vehicle wherever it's handy uh we'll be we'll be coming out with a portable one that can snap on your key ring or backpack or something like telling you um think about um find out where the dentists get those little sucky things they put in your mouth (laughs) they're super powerful tiny yeah and maybe maybe there's something to a little portable vacuum you want to make sure that you're able to get down low on the tick. And, and first of all, that stops any transmission of yucky tick juice yep. from the body into the, it's called the hypostone, which is yeah. the hollow straw. Um, if you use things like a vacuum or something, <laughs> credit card, you, yeah. you're going to scrape off the tick, but you'll probably leave the mouth part in there. Yeah, um, yeah. It's not a major deal, but you certainly don't want to. You don't any... want to be running around with tick mouths all over you. No, no. I mean, yeah. it'll work itself out eventually. But, yeah. you know, it's, it, and ticks don't have heads, by the way. It's just a part of their, their body. Great. Headless little arachnid <laughs> sucky spitty things. Yes. I we hate should those do, things. We should do a horror movie. Yeah. If there are three species in the world I could kill, I talked about this before, but it's... Uh, it's uh, ticks, it's yellow jackets, and mosquitoes. And it's mosquitoes. Yes. That's right. Yeah, I'll I agree. get rid of all of them. Uh, I agree. The worst. Um, so tell me about. I, I just had you know my buck in the uh, in the garage laying on the ground for mm-hmm. a full day. Um, are there ticks running around in here that I can't see? Um, probably. Yeah. It takes a while. Once the heat escapes from the the body. The ticks will realize that there's no more blood flowing and and they've got to go somewhere else. Um, What I do sometimes is I have my my sled. I'll put a little bit of water in it at the bottom and I hang my deer in in, in the backyard. And they'll They'll drop off into that and eventually they will drown. um, But they can survive a few days. Now, what about what about my my Jeep? So I put the deer in the back of the Jeep, brought it to the butcher today. It was wrapped in a tarp, but... um, you know, now I, I drove to the butcher and back, and obviously my Jeep's not treated with permethrin and, yeah. and all that stuff, so I got to be afraid of that. 
Yeah, I mean, I would be afraid of anywhere, uh, you know, anywhere where that deer was or where you were uh, without permethrin. Um, I'm starting to itch all over yeah. now. I'm just thinking well, again, it. the good thing about it is that the, the ticks active right now are the larger size ones. So simply doing a daily tick check is going to be extremely important. Um, you know, you'll be able to visualize these ticks, rub your fingers through your hair at night if you're watching TV or sitting around yeah. uh, just to feel for anything. Mm-hmm. Um there's uh, something I always say, and this uh, was recommended by the University of Rhode Island, is that when you uh, are doing your business in the bathroom before your shower or wherever, sitting on the toilet, that's a good time to check out your, your as I call them, private goodies. So you got a magnifying glass next to the, <laughs> next to the toilet? Um, <laughs> well. And I'm not going to say what that's used for. <laughs> no, but you, you should. It's, just, it's a good opportunity in a well-lit area. Yeah. To examine, you know, what I say. I have a video. It's a sort of a PSA, public service announcement about daily tick checks, which has been viewed uh, a lot as well. And, and some uh, Department of Public Health. There's another people. idea for your product. I know you're, you, as you advance it, put a really powerful light on the on the end of one of it. Yeah, and you well, can it, use does, it, as a... it does come in with a magnifier enclosed oh, in good. it. Um, yeah. But uh, we, we haven't put a light on it yet, but an LED might be an interesting addition. Yeah, to help you scan yourself. Yeah. 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 So, But anyway, on that tick check <clears throat> video, I say, um, uh, while, you're, while you're sitting on the toilet, um, you should examine all your private goodies and look for any hitchhikers on your junk because <laughs> ticks like your junk. Yeah. yeah. So well, they like warm places, right? Yeah, warm, moist places. Yeah. And, and that's that's a good area for them. Um, yep. So you'll need to be able to visualize that better. And, uh, you know, the, the whole battle cry here is that Tick Man Dan says, do your daily tick checks and don't neglect your crevices. <laughs> so that's very important. Um, yeah. You know, these are the types of things that we need to do. But Don't I, neglect your crevices. Don't walk around with tick mouths hanging out of you. Mm-hmm. And uh, do your daily checks. I, I, I like it. That's right. There's a couple of quick things I just want to mention that, you know, and I, I run across this all the time. People call me, go, oh, I had a tick on me. Well, first of all, don't ever throw away a tick that you've removed. Um, because if you want to send that in for testing to find out what's in it, you can do that. Um, and you say 60, 50 or 60% of ticks carry Lyme disease? Adult deer ticks in our area. Adult deer ticks. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, I do want to talk about before, like, let you finish that thought and then talk, I want to talk about the different kinds of ticks and some that might not, some might, how you identify them and some that might not be mm-hmm. as dangerous as others. And... Okay. Well, the best thing, the best advice that I can give you, um, is to when you do have a tick on, uh, on, on yourself or a family member um, to go first first thing you need to do is go to the um, University of Rhode Island's website it's at tickencounter.org all one word yep and what you're going to do is you're going to click on the tick spotters uh, tab at the top now the value of this is great because what it will allow you to do is submit an image it's a free service and you're going to fill out some information so based upon where you live the tick image um how long you think it was feeding uh they will get back to you and tell you it they'll identify that tick Hmm. they have a special measuring thing that they can do to determine approximately how long it was feeding yeah and they can cross-reference that data uh, of the type of tick and where you are, what and how time of the year, it is. and based on tick um, test submissions, yeah, to tell you what they think is, you know, whether or not it might, you know, I mean, they're guessing, but if like yeah. anaplasmosis has really uh, been coming back a lot in that in your particular area, your particular time of the year, yeah, they can give you a risk assessment. So if it's a deer tick in Ashland. Um, uh, and it's been in somebody for 26 hours or 24 hours, um, and it's an adult stage, uh, you are probably at a pretty high level of risk. So they, yeah. can, they can categorize it as low, moderate, or high risk. Yep. At that point, they can assign options for each level of risk as to what to do. Do you need to go see a doctor? Do you want to get it tested? If you want to get it tested, then you can uh, visit the University of Massachusetts website and that's a fee-based service. But if you do use the promo code TICKIES, you can save yourself uh, $5. And that website is simply tickreport.com. Yep. 
And, and so, your website, because we haven't mentioned yet. Tick, oh, yeah. Tickies.com. Tickies.com. Um, and the YouTube channel and, and the Facebook page. So check it out. Um, I am always available to answer questions regarding uh, my opinion on, on yeah. anything. Yeah, Dan really does. <laughs> I don't know if he loves ticks or it's kind of a <laughs> Stockholm syndrome thing. Um, but he's wearing a sweatshirt with a tick on it. He drove a big truck that's got ticks all over it and ticks on the back of his phone. He's uh, he's serious about ticks. He knows a lot about it. So I have tattoos. And, if, and he's got tattoos. I haven't seen him. Um, and uh, I've seen him on, online on the forums, and he, he does talk about it a lot, and he's, he's always open to answering questions about them. Absolutely. How do you identify a deer tick versus a wood tick versus a lone star tick and those other things? And Because um, I've heard, you know, the big wood ticks, they're mm-hmm. not, they don't carry as many diseases or what? Well, yeah, they're, they're all capable of, mm-hmm. uh, as I term it, vectorizing pathogens. Mm-hmm. Um, the one we have to worry about, again, is the deer tick in our area. It, it has the ability to carry the most and the most variety of, of microbes out of them all in our area. Um, right now, we're dealing with lone star ticks, dog ticks, and, um, and the deer tick. To identify them, uh, because there's different stages so of So where's their... the wood tick? Is it not around here? Um, Wood tick, or is it another well, word for a dog tick? Yeah, or? there's dog ticks, there's brown ticks, there's wood ticks. There's a lot yeah. of different, ma- mainly based on geographics, uh, the type of tick. But a wood tick is, could, could be the brown tick or the dog tick. It, it's pretty much the same. Um, you know, we, we could look that up. But um, I, I love the deer tick. <laughs> that's, my, that's my baby. Yeah. Um, so I don't concern myself too much with the others because they don't really... Do much damage, although the Lone Star tick is starting to um, become I mean, that, problematic. That one's just evil. I mean, that, just, can yeah. you imagine? That's the worst thing for a sportsman who loves, loves Red to eat meat, meat yeah. loves to loves to hunt and find his own oh. meat, and then to just have that. Just the irony of it getting horrible, getting destroyed. Yeah. You know, by the the yeah. very thing you love. Right. So as far as ID goes, the first thing I would do is I would send it down to Tick Spotters for a free uh, identification. Yeah. The um, They'll do a much better job than anybody because once that tick be- starts to become engorged, it's really difficult to tell them apart. Mm-hmm. Uh, mainly it's based on size, but they have a hard little shell uh, called the scutum, yep. which could have different patterns which they can use to identify the ticks. So there are certainly many um, uh, things you can look at online at that tickencounter.org site. They have they, You can ID the tick there. Um, on your own with the, the charts, you can go to pretty much any DPH or CDC mm-hmm. uh, websites and look at it that way. But um, you know, you have ticks that have three or four stages of life. You have ticks that are levels different levels of engorgement, and you have differences in patterns of that tick from male to female. So it's it's not so easy to ID that tick right off the bat. Yeah. Um, so I would just treat every tick as a as a bad one, yeah. Uh, if no. it's biting you, yeah. and then do a little more research uh, to get it fully identified and then potentially test it. But don't throw away the tick, even if it's in pieces. Yeah. Um, if you haven't used the tickies, <laughs> save it in a baggie in a Ziploc, and they can still test it if, as long as they have some part of that DNA. Rumor has it, if you take a tick off, you save it in a baggie and you put it under your pillow. Tick Man Dan will come <laughs> flying through your window to scoop tick, that thing up. The Tick Fairy. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, I talk about it all the time. Uh, one thing that is awesome about hunting is that there's so many different ways that you can hunt. You can always keep your hunt fresh by using different weapons or um, hunting in different seasons. Some state has an early season. Some have a late season. You can hunt a buck here and a doe there and a Saturday here and a Sunday there. Well, one of the easiest ways to change up your hunt, if you haven't got into muzzleloader hunting yet, muzzleloader is a great way to extend your season. In New Hampshire, it's early, before the rifle season, before the bow season. In Vermont, it's late, it's at the end. Um, but muzzleloader hunting is awesome. And so I'm super excited to announce a partnership with Woodman Arms Muzzleloader. This muzzleloader actually like shoots like a rifle too. And the coolest part about Woodman Arms is they recommend that you not clean your gun. You don't need to clean this thing. If you're using Blackhorn 209 powder, you don't need to clean it. Yeah. Now, muzzle loaders are the messiest guns out there. You're shooting, you're, you're shooting powder that's either loosely packed or in a pellet, and 
just imagine lighting that thing on fire in there. Uh, it's an extremely messy thing, but with the Woodman Arms, the way they build it, you don't need to clean that muzzle loader. That's like number one selling point in the world. But once you hold this thing, it feels like a rifle. It just feels right in your hands. It's got a hammerless action, so there's absolutely no hammer on the gun. It's got a cross bolt safety. It, it feels like you're carrying your uh, 7600 through the woods. Um, I'm extremely excited about this partnership. They're making me a gun right now. Uh, throughout the summer as I'm shooting it and into the fall and getting ready, I'll report back on, on how it shoots. But you don't have to look any further than all the reviews and all the really great hunters in the Northeast and across the country. Really, they're selling all over the country because they're the best muzzleloader in the country. Look at what everybody else is saying about this gun. Um, that's enough for me to endorse it without ever shooting one. But I can't wait to shoot one and follow up. Um, with you guys and tell you how it is um, this summer, this fall. For now, go to woodmanarms.com. Check them out. You can build your own custom gun right there. Call Timmy Bolduck, who uh, was on this podcast and is a good friend of mine, and uh, he'll tell you anything that you need to know about the gun. Woodman Arms, America's most accurate and dependable muzzleloader on the market, handcrafted in New Hampshire. Go to woodmanarms.com and start building your gun today. Um. What was I going to say? Uh, um, no danger in, um, you know, the meat of a deer, right? Is, has there been any studies on, like, because, you know, ticks have been destroying the population of, of moose in mm-hmm. Maine. Right. Um, for some reason, they aren't, they aren't killing as many deer or any, really, that I'm aware of. The deer, because maybe they're... Um, that host that you said, you know, whatever, I forget In, the word. Incompetent host. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, you know, maybe they're just... Well, first of all, from what I understand about the winter tick, which is yeah. what has been uh, <laughs> causing the problems for the moose, is that it's not illness that kills them. Mm-hmm. It's the sheer uh, loss of blood. Um, what happens is that they irritate the skin, the moose itch, and they rub fur off and in an attempt to... Up. Yeah. And then also the sheer numbers of these ticks and the size mm-hmm. uh, will cause them to become anemic. Yeah. So the combination of anemic anemia and, and loss of fur in an environment where temperatures can be well below zero for long periods of time, yeah. they're dying. Yeah. Um, and, and it's tragic. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if I've seen a winter tick in our area right now, but they are definitely a different species than what we're really concerned with as far as disease for humans. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's interesting to see if they actually make their way down here. But I would assume that they're considered more of a colder climate type of tick. And since our climates tend to be warming, um, yeah. we're probably not so much worried about it. But the yeah. deer... Again, uh, the question about the meat, I've been eating it, you know, as we mentioned uh, in another podcast, um, uh, regularly for decades. And as far as I know... Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just know there's, like, concerns for chronic wasting disease. I know that's completely different. That's, yeah, that's com- yeah, completely prions, different. Yeah, prions. Um, and, the pro- you know, it's a protein, right, That's that uh, is part of the, 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 you know, it can get in the plants that they eat and, it, yeah. you know, it can seep into their, their meat that way, but... Um, yeah, that's good. Good to know. Yeah. So, so again, those pathogens are not surviving in the deer system. Yeah. So they, to me, that says they wouldn't be present in the meat. Yeah. Plus the fact that we do cook the meat, um, you know, and freeze, uh, that it puts the odds in our favor quite a bit, but I've never experienced any, um, or heard of anybody getting, getting Lyme disease from eating venison. Yeah. Well, it's, um, it's, it's good that, People can get educated, get paranoid on ticks, Mm -hmm. you know, get paranoid on yellow jackets, do an allergy test. Honestly, just go do one. It doesn't cost anything or it's really cheap, whatever your um, deductibles are. Uh, Go get a test, see what you're allergic to because you might not know and it could save your life. Um, Buddy of mine just got Lyme disease. He's not a hunter. He's not Mm -hmm. an outdoorsman. He golfs. Right. Um, He takes his dog for walks and stuff. Lives in New York. He, He got Lyme disease and he's, you know texting us and he's like look it's no joke you're tired all the time yeah my bones are hurting a little bit and he's an athletic kid and Mm -hmm. you know young guy 33 and uh you know you you can you know you you, it can get better you know if it's treated if lyme disease is treated early on you know it's not like it's a death sentence but uh it can be bad and um, well well, it could be a death sentence for a lot of people absolutely suicide rates for chronic lyme sufferers really pretty high um 
respectively speaking. Really? The, the thing about it is that it is purely an individual thing. Everybody is affected differently. Mm-hmm. Again, I've been bitten you know, in excess of 200 times. I am not aware of any tick-borne illness that I have. Yeah. There have been people that have bitten, been bitten once, and their lives are completely ruined. Yeah. And it, it, it's just, I mean, I think the next wave of research should be focusing more on it's what they call genomics as far as an individual's genetic makeup and how they may react to certain types of um, invaders, so to speak, in their bodies. Yeah. And that may help determine or, or allow them to make better treatment options yeah. more specific to an individual based upon that genomic makeup. Like, you know, cancer. I mean, everybody's different. If you have 100 women with breast cancer... They're not all going to be treated the same, and they're not all, not all going to react the same to their yeah. to the medication. COVID, yeah. same thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, everything is just yeah, yeah. Sure. sure. You know, our inner biology is something you can't see, and you don't really know what's going on. Yeah. So, so but I but I think they are making progress in yeah. uh, developing better better treatment plans, which is great. Yeah, that's great. So to wrap it up, um, um, again, get paranoid about it. Um, Use Sawyer permethrin as a preventative measure. Mm -hmm. Put it on your clothes. Um, The ticks will die when they walk over um, permethrin. They're gonna, they're gonna, you know, walk over an inch of it and they're dead. We like killing ticks, and we want to hear, we want to hear them scream a little bit. Yeah. Um, And then uh, have a tick use because you want to be able to remove it effectively and quickly, right? As soon after the bite um, as you can. And uh, it's a great product. Go to Um, tickuse.com. as well, a, you, you can reach out. I, I, I answer my toll-free number personally. It's 855-TICK-READY. 855-TICK-READY. So call, call up Dan um, and uh, talk to him about anything you want to uh, talk about ticks. And um, just don't prank him. Don't give him don't, I'm sure he gets plenty of prank calls. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, thanks uh, Thanks again for coming, man. It's, uh, it's starting to get dark in here. I realized I didn't turn the light on in the garage. Right. So it's getting a little creepy. Well, yeah. The, the, yeah, now that I think about it, you know, I see weapons and stuff around here. <laughs> it's a good time to I'm wrap it up. Nervous. Okay, yeah. thanks for having me. Thanks, Dan. I appreciate it. Big bucks I've been dreaming often Every night till I'm in a coffin From Mount Woods to the burbs of Boston I'm looking for a tree to get lost in Chris Warner's little dust in the snow Quality time, just me and my bow Fall evenings, I know just where to go for some quality times for me and my bow. It's just me and my bow.